I wasn't going to do a recording, a voice recording on this, but um, there's a fair bit that needs kind of explaining. So this is our uh, Atta uh, pod setup. We've got uh, two large pods. Uh, in the bottom you'll see that there's um, plaster of Paris, and uh, we've got uh, the fungus sat on that. The fungus is sat on the um, plaster of Paris, which is slightly sloping, and you'll see there's a tube that comes out the bottom so that any excess water can be drained uh, away from the fungus. Uh, I wouldn't expect that to, uh, to happen quite yet, but when the fungus fills those huge tubs, it does create quite a lot of moisture, so we added that in there. The feeding chamber is on the right there, and on the left we've got the waste. So you'll see the ants carrying all the uh, waste fungus and any dead ants, and popping them in there. We've um, created them in this, these cheap tubs, because they're easier just to dispose of. Um, you can drill holes in them and just uh, make some makeshift air vents, which we, we've done on that. So usually we'll just attach those and uh, throw them away, complete. Um, here we've got um, fungus in some smaller tubs. Um, again, they're just quite cheap. Uh, these were originally not on show, hence why we didn't have the um, the atta pods, which you see above. <coughs> We've just added those, and they're just uh, getting used to those, moving soil around a bit in there. And uh, you'll see that the all the chambers are serviced from the left-hand side. So that uh, is a tub I added the other day with a bit of privet in there, and already they started to build a fungus garden in there. The, um, the pipe to the left that you see going up is where the thermostat is. So that just controls the temperatures. So the majority of the food is fed into that uh, large tub on the top right hand side. And that's where the queen is housed. The, um, the setup is heated with two heat mats under the large fungus um, gardens. Uh, there's a Mesa, Mesa Barbarus. There's a just colony that I've kind of grown fond of although you can't see most of them so here we are so we're about to change the the main uh, waste tub uh, which is at the lower lower part of the uh, the setup uh, you'll need gloves for this because there's a lot of ants in there so here we've got a stop end it's just uh, something that we sell on the website nothing exciting a bit of cotton wool and that stuff is great I seem to use so much of that so we just detach this, easier said than done, here we go, and then just connect the, the close end on that. So we only, uh, only have the ants now that are escaping from the main pod. Throw any back in, that's the feeding station on the right hand side. That's uh, due to get a clean out in a moment, so you'll see me doing that. These are very handy. Uh, I use those to connect walkways within the pods for the ants to climb on, but they're also useful for cleaning out the tubes. So if we just seal that tube off, a bit of cotton wool in there, throw any excess back in. Rubber gloves are very, very, uh, very invaluable at this time of uh, a colony of this size. Uh, there weren't any major soldiers in here, so I wasn't uh, too worried. But if I'd have gone anywhere near the fungus garden, then I would have gloved up, or I'd doubled up on the gloves. Uh, they can draw quite a bit of blood. So here we are. Just whacking a bit of the um, cotton wool in the tube, because this will be joined back to the setup, so where it's got damp with all the ants running up and down with waste. We just force that through. And that'll just clean the pipe, so it makes it easier for the ants to see. And uh, also takes out any excess moisture, so that's ready to go. So here we are, just disconnecting our homemade vents, nothing exciting. Usually this is the kind of, uh, these are the paths that you don't usually see. Um, in our old setup, we had all these enclosed in a unit, so all these kind of cheap tubs would never be seen normally. They wouldn't be on show like that. But uh, they seem to work quite well. 
uh, the holes that were drilled in that were drilled with uh, the drill bits. Uh, we, we do the cone drill bits that go up to 32 millimeter, which are very handy for adding um, tubs and things at last minute. So uh, very useful. Just turning out the rest of the ants that are on that lid back into their uh, feeding station. Which seems to be taking a bit longer than I remember. There's always a few running around afterwards. There's one that got the thumb. Perfect. I find that uh, when cleaning this out that you, you've got a lot of ants in here that actually won't be that much use to the colony for very much longer. So uh, the feisty ones will always run to the top and I find just using a a small paintbrush and agitating the tub will bring the uh, bring them to the surface um, and I just kind of work with the ants so I run the um, the paintbrush around the edge of the tub and they will just literally cling to it and they're very easy then just to put back into the main main garden there we are so they'll just throw this back in I was quite surprised when opening this tub how many uh, minima there were in there. We don't usually get that many in the uh, the waste garden. Um, this hasn't been cleaned out for three months. The um, the feeding station that uh, gets not a deep clean, but it, it gets a a pick over, and uh, I remove anything that the ants don't want after about a week. So it's once a week. This is a once a quarter, so every three months I'll just go through and change this. So again, just picking off any of those feisty little ants uh, and shoving them back. They'll make their way back to the fungus garden eventually, but just working with the ants. If any escape, you can just pick those up afterwards. I don't worry too much. Um, as a matter of fact, it was about three hours later, I was drinking a cup of tea and uh, I felt something tickle my chin. And there was actually one <laughs> normal that we get to escapes. So here we are, the tub's all cleaned out. I'm just adding one tablespoon of the um, the crap that was in the previous tub. So that just helps the ants to identify that it's uh, the dumping area, just in case they've forgotten. Uh, when the colony is this size, it doesn't tend to be a problem. But I find just putting a bit of uh, the old poo in there just reminds them of where they should be dumping it. So it's become a habit more than anything. But if you've got a smaller colony, that's actually quite worth doing. Um, I'm attaching this uh, waste tub at a different angle now so they'll be accessing it from the side of the tub rather than through the top because I want uh, maximum ventilation coming out the top of that so we put the two makeshift vents in the top so there we are it's hooked up and it's accessed from the left so now we go over to the feeding station uh, now, my colony surprisingly eat, well, they don't eat, but they consume an awful lot of greenery. Uh, so I'm taking out the best stuff, which will go back in. There's a few ants running around. They didn't go very far. They're just running around the lid. Not too worried about those. Um, using the paintbrush to take out all the old bits that uh, they don't want. Disposing of those, the stems, etc. And uh, that stuff on the left will go back in. Um, I've turned up all the loose stuff in there and put it back in that tub on the left hand side. So once they finish delving around in that I can just remove that whole tub and throw that away. But um, I tend only to clean the, the main feeding station once a month. Um, this is what we feed them I suppose on a weekly basis actually. They will get their food topped up. Uh, their next feed will be things like privet and a cuba japonica. So there's uh, a nice avoid cabbage. They do like their greens. In fact, uh, these atta eat uh, better than I do. So we'll throw two leaves in there. They will, over the course of a week, consume that whole cabbage. So uh, we won't see much of that by the end of the week. Um, they tend to be going off Brussels sprouts. I may have overdone it, but uh, I'll, I'll just pop two in there, chop them in half so they can pick out the best bits they want. I always find that's a bit better. Um, curly kale from Tesco's other supermarkets are available they do seem to like that stuff they even eat the stalks so a good handful of that um, and I'll use the rest of that bag throughout the week 
Um, I've not tried a modern pair, but we'll chop a bit off the bottom, throw that in and see how they take to that. Um, I always have bits of fruit in the fridge that, that are for the atters, and I find that cutting the bottoms of the fruit off and offering it up first means that the uh, the top end of the fruit actually lasts longer. So if I did that to uh, cut the top end of the apple off, it wouldn't actually last that long. They do like their apple. Uh, they tend to like the coxes. Um, so I usually put a thicker bit in there and a really thin bit, and they'll head for that straight away. Uh, a bit more of the Cuba Japonica. They eat loads of this stuff. Um, yeah, an absolute branch. A good hefty branch a week. So I'm just stripping off the leaves. There's no point in putting stuff in there that I know that they're not going to eat because I then have to fish it out afterwards. So uh, we we'll throw that in. It's always quite hard to try and find things that they'll eat at this time of the year. There's a chrysanthemum from my uh, other half's birthday bouquet and the yellow one wallop throw that in uh, oh there we are have a chrysanthemum carnation should know that I'm a florist throw that in there a bit of color and there we are job done